Hey guys, it's Brian again from Lake Kicker Scuba and Marina. Got another quick video discussion for you. We're going to talk about the dry suit and we're going to talk about the BCD. Okay? And the reason we're doing this is I, I recently read an article on scuba board and I'll, as always I'll make sure I'll, I'll put the link for the down in the description below for the article. Simply click on it, you can go read it, make up your mind which side of the fence you sit on. But the name of the article says, Dan advocating using a dry suit for buoyancy control while diving. Uh, and there's a lot of good points on both sides of the aisle, whether you should only use your dry suit for primary buoyancy or just use your dry suit enough to eliminate the, the suit squeeze at depth, then switch over to your BCD. Um, so which side of the aisle should you fall on? That's going to be up to you. But let's talk about each component itself, what it's designed for, and, and the pros and cons to each method, and then you make your decision. The BCD. What does BCD stand for? Buoyancy Control Device or Buoyancy Compensating Device. It is strictly designed to manipulate buoyancy. Okay, You inflate it, you float, you deflate it, you sink, you put a little bit of air in, and you're going to have that neutral buoyancy. Okay, The dry suit. What is a dry suit? It is not a BCD. A dry suit is an exposure protection, and it does exactly as the name implies. It keeps you dry. It does not necessarily keep you warm, but it keeps you dry. Now, there's some components of the dry suit that you don't have in a wetsuit. And those components and the operation of those components have some of the same features that a BCD does, hence why this article was written. Depending on the undergarments that you're wearing, when you inflate your dry suit, you're doing it the, the suit keeps you dry, but it's still an air pocket, and you're having to manipulate the air inside to, one, to eliminate the suit squeeze that you get at depth, or two, to add more air to stay warm. And when you do that, you are manipulating your buoyancy. Now, should you do it to actually manipulate your buoyancy as, as a whole, or just do it to stay warm? Well, that's going to be up to you. Warmer water environments, people who wear dry suits just to stay warm, um, they're not going to have to put quite as much air in. They're just putting enough air to eliminate that suit squeeze. That still may not be enough air to make them neutrally buoyant. So they are going to have to use their dry suits, or I'm sorry, their BCDs to manipulate their buoyancy throughout the dive because they may put way too much air in their suit, then they can't move. Now you take a colder water environment where you're having to put a lot more air in to stay warm, that a lot more air may be just enough to actually manipulate your buoyancy throughout the dive. So it's really going to be up to you whether or not you primarily use your dry suit or you use your dry suit and BCD or you just use your BCD. Now, why do instructors teach the way that they do? And I think there's two major reasons here. Let's, let's say that there's two types of instructors. There's the independent instructor and there's the, um, we'll say the industry instructor who works for the stores and stuff like that. A lot of times the instructors that work for the stores, they're on a production-based thing. Not saying the more students they teach, the more money they make, but simply th th there is a time restraint sometimes for the, the bigger shops who's trying to rock out students. And sometimes those instructors will only teach to those minimum standards because they're trying to get as many students through. And it may not be their fault. It may be their employers telling them to do that. And, th and that's okay. As long as the students meet minimum standards, they are getting qualified or certified to dive. That's fine. But you take your independent instructors who has more time on his hand to spend with the individual student. He may exceed the minimum standard. So in a dry suit course, for the most part, most training agencies, it's what is a dry suit, the physics behind it, don't in and off in it, operation of it, and to manipulate buoyancy. Okay, that's a dry suit course in a nutshell. But your independent instructors may go even more in depth with that. Okay, they may say, okay, let's simulate, instead of just saying it, it's 90 degrees outside, the water 75, and you're wanting to do your dry suit course, let's assume that it's a lot colder outside. Let's assume that the water's in the 30s. And let's add more undergarments to you. Let's, let's show you that if you add more undergarments, you're going to have to add more weights. And they may exceed those minimum standards. They may extend that class out to where the instructor who teaches for the shop may not have the, the benefit of having the time to do that. So instructors play a big role in, in how the students dive later on in life because they're going to do what their instructor does. So there's many reasons that some choose to only use the dry suit for buoyancy and why some use a BCD only for buoyancy. Um, it's really going to be personal preference. Just understand that there's certain things to think about. Um, emergency procedures. If you get into a rapid descent in a dry suit, you may be trying to dump the BCD and dump the dry suit at the same time. 
Uh, and depending on how you have your exhaust valve, whether it's in an open position or whatnot, you may have to push it in and do to where some instructors say, no, let's just simply teach them to use the dry suit, and that way they only got one thing to manipulate. Um, th there's no right or wrong answer here, and whichever side of the aisle you, you're going to fall on, that, that's fine. Um, just understand, BCDs are used for buoyancy, dry suits are used for exposure protection. Sometimes, though, that dry suit does manipulate your buoyancy, and, and that's fine. But depending on the environment that you dive in, how much weight you wear, how much undergarment you wear, and how comfortable you are, that's what's going to be the determining factor on whether you use strictly the dry suit for buoyancy control or use your BCD for buoyancy control. So guys, I hope you make up your own mind. Make sure you click the link below, go to this article on Scuba Board, read through it, and see other people's opinions on it. And I appreciate you watching this video. I really hope it kind of opened your eyes. Maybe it can start a discussion between you and your dive buddies if a lot of y'all uh, use dry suits. You know, start a discussion with them, see what they think. So, but guys, as always, Make sure you check back each week for new videos. Make sure you follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube, and as always, guys, we appreciate your business.